beef. Oh, and this beef here, it's a good one. Checking in at number 31 on my all-time list of top 50 Whitlock media beefs is the former, the former president, head chairman of ESPN, Don Skipper. Number 31 in the beef list. Uh, John Skipper um, is someone that I have somewhat mixed feelings about. I don't regret my beef with John Skipper, but I have somewhat mixed feelings about because I do think John Skipper is well-intentioned. I think he's very well-intentioned. I don't think he knows what he's doing. I think he got promoted beyond his level of competence and personality. When John Skipper, when he was the number two man at ESPN, and he went around and dealt with individual talents and helped them execute their ideas and their vision. Great position for him. He's excellent at that. He helped Bill Simmons reach all of his goals from that number two spot. When he ascended to the number one spot at ESPN, John Skipper wants to be liked way too much to be the number one person at any major corporation. He desires to be liked. He finds it difficult to tell anyone the truth or to tell anyone no. And so John Skipper is the guy that, in my first go around at ESPN, let's say in the early 2000s, he was in a junior position at ESPN, and when I was writing for page two, and this is in my first go around at ESPN, he uh, and a guy named John Walsh were responsible for basically creating an environment and nurturing talent and developing talent and helping talent execute their ideas. He was in the perfect place. He, 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 that was the perfect job for John Skipper. He could create a culture and an environment where creative people could excel. So in my first, I could, couldn't say anything negative about John Skipper uh, in my original, and again, I didn't have much contact with him in my original dealings at ESPN, uh, cause I just didn't. I wasn't working there full time, I was working at, at uh, uh, the Kansas City Star and just doing the ESPN stuff on the side. But in 2013, when John Skipper wanted to launch The Undefeated, an affinity site uh, similar to Bill Simmons' Grantland, uh, he wanted to do that for black sports writers and he reached out to me. Uh, I was at Fox Sports and I was clearly uh, the top sports columnist uh, in the country at that time, and there was no one better to hire uh, to do The Undefeated than me. At this time, John is the CEO. He's at the very top of ESPN. He's not running around helping exec or helping talented people execute their ideas. He's running the entire company, and he has underlings reporting into him that are typical underlings they don't tell the whole truth. They are interested in executing their own ideas and manipulating the guy at the top into doing what they're interested in. So John Skipper hires me and he's not willing to provide me with the protection and with the support that I need to execute the undefeated. He left me to his underlings and his underlings did everything in their power to undermine me. Guys like John Kozner, Rob King, uh, all of these guys were like, Whitlock's toxic, people here hate him. You got the Scoop Jackson crowd, you got the Stephen A. Smith crowd, you got the uh, uh, Jamel Hill crowd, you got little snakes, a uh, little inconsequential but mouthy, uh, what's the name, Howard Bryant or whatever, remember Howard Bryant, the, 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 the typical black liberal sports writer, who wants to be a pro-black, but's married to a white woman, lives in a community that's 99.9% .9 white, but he's the blackest guy on the planet. 
Anyway, you got all these people working against me and John Skipper doesn't have uh, the testicular fortitude to tell them people to go pound sand. I made a decision. This guy is going to run the undefeated because he's the most talented guy. He's the only guy with the vision. He's the only guy with the ideas that could get this thing off the ground and do it at a level that would bring honor and prestige to ESPN. Go back and listen to my beef uh, segment on uh, Scoop Jackson. Listen to that when I, because I unpack for you there that there's a bunch of black sports media people that don't want merit or high achievement to be any part of the evaluation process of black sports writers. Merit, accomplishments, competence, they're all important to me. And I'm applying those standards to everybody that I want to work on the undefeated. And that put me at odds with a lot of people. And so imagine Jason Whitlock has this standard for black sports writers and people in the media that's really high and it's all about merit, it's all about competence, and, and he's an honest person. And so I'm telling people like, hey man, I don't know if you fit what we're doing here. I'm trying to do it politely. But all of these people also have access to John Skipper. So I'll interview a candidate and that candidate, and again, this is John Skipper who's at the very top of ESPN. He has more important things to do than hire or participate in the hiring of the people that are gonna be working for me at the undefeated. But he gave them all access, from William Roden to guys, I, names I can't even remember. And so they would leave a meeting with the president, the head of ESPN, and he would be telling them, you're the greatest. Oh my God, you would be the perfect person uh, for Jason to hire at the undefeated. And then that person would leave his office and they would call or email me or have a meeting with me. John Skipper's told them they're the greatest and they're the perfect candidate to work at the uh, undefeated. And then I would look at their work, their work samples. And then I would call and interview people or their references and find out like, holy cow, this person has a drinking problem, this person's uh, writing samples are horrendous, and I would have to delicately like, yeah, I'll circle back to you if we need you, or yeah, I'm not sure if this is exactly the direction we're going. And so all of these people would hate me. They've been told by the president of ESPN, John Skipper, they're the greatest. I've looked at their work, evaluated their references, and I'm sitting there, I got the real information. And I'm just like, nah, this person's not a fit, can't work at the level that we would need to do. And, and so when you're wondering why, Stephen A. Smith, or Jamel Hill, any of these people, and I, I've heard, I, I once heard Jamel Hill say, none of us wanted to work with Whitlock. And, and I heard Stephen A. Smith once say, yeah, Whitlock stood outside my office or outside my studio begging me to work for the undefeated. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Are you crazy? I didn't want to work with any of them. They had no talent. They had no work ethic. They had no written accomplishments. They were people that would go on TV and talk and do buffooner stuff on TV. Why would I want them? And so I'm telling virtually every black employee at ESPN and a bunch of people that didn't work at ESPN, they were all told by John Skipper or one of his underlings, oh, you're perfect for the undefeated. Oh my God. They and I'm sitting there and this includes like a stand for red, all these people that were told, oh God, you'd be perfect for the other. I'm like, nah, I don't want them. They, they can't write, they can't operate at the level that I'm looking for. And you wonder why these people don't like me? You wonder why they spend all this time talking behind my back? 
it, it, and, and I don't even blame him. But that's why I kind of just like laugh with Stephen A. Smith. Man, I talk to everybody, black and Schwarzer. They hate Jason Whitlock. Oh, blah. And for the most part, they're all people that I said like, hey, man, you're not good enough for what we're doing. And unless you really want to get trained up and work really hard to improve, you won't be a fit for what we're doing. That's why I was so despised. And so, and that's why I had beef with John Skipper. He hung me out to dry. He, he well-intentioned, but had no idea what he was doing to me, what spot he was putting me in by meeting with any and everybody and telling any and everybody, oh, you're perfect uh, for the undefeated. And basically leading them to the conclusion, Whitlock's crazy if he doesn't hire you. Then uh, later, I believe in like, when I left ESPN in 2014 or 15, or when I, I'm sorry, I got pushed out, fired, whatever, at ESPN, uh, I, I wrote for the Wall Street Journal, I wrote this piece explaining how Deadspin had bullied <clears throat> John Skipper and ESP, ESPN into going woke, into becoming a leftist uh, propaganda machine. It's, it's a great article, and it explains what happened at ESPN in a way that most people won't. Oh, God, did that irritate John Skipper? Did it irritate the people at ESPN? Uh, I want to read you a quote from Burke Magnus. So this is, I believe, back in 2015, 2016. He's, I think he's quoted either in Sports Business Journal. Yeah, John Oran wrote the piece. And, and this is him complaining about the article I wrote in the Wall Street Journal and the narrative that ESPN was a propaganda machine for leftist thought. Listen to this quote. And this is, I believe, in 2016, 2015, somewhere around in there. One of ESPN's top executives accused Fox Sports of advocating what he called a false notion that ESPN operates with a liberal bias. This is the quote from Burke Magnus. Listen to this. The whole narrative is a false one that was seeded and perpetuated primarily by a direct business competitor. We have no political agenda whatsoever. <laughs> it's comical. Burke Magnus there speaking for John Skipper and everybody over at ESPN. Uh, anyway, that's the history of my beef with John Skipper, who is now, I believe, partnered with uh, Dan Levitard on the uh, Metal Arc media campaign. I'm sure they have no political agenda whatsoever either. They're not leftists either. They're just playing it down the middle over there at Metal Arc Media. But anyway, that's my beef with uh, John Skipper. Thank you.